Hello and welcome back to Feature Tunes, where we explore the intersection of retrofuturism and animation. We have done over a dozen episodes now, and have barely touched a show or property that to most is synonymous with this intersection, The Jetsons. The Jetsons is a series that is very difficult to cover in just one video, so rather than comb through every episode looking for predictions, I thought we'd do something a little different. Today we are going to be looking instead at how the Jetsons have been used to more or less sell you the future. To clarify, we will be looking at the Jetsons shilling products, uh, not plugs for related material like fast food tie-ins uh, or networks they appeared on, though there is plenty of that material out there, uh, especially for Cartoon Network. Because of the brand's staying power, this trip is going to span several decades, so it should give us an interesting look at how futurism developed over time. Now we talked about the Jetsons very briefly in episode 1, so we will expand upon that a bit. The Jetsons debuted in primetime on ABC in September 1962. It ran only one season, although new episodes were produced for syndication in the mid-80s. They experienced a brief resurgence later in that decade with a crossover with the Flintstones, and eventually a feature film in 1990. The brand is still going strong. Uh, for all you marks out there, the Jetsons most recently appeared in 2017's The Jetsons and WWE Robo WrestleMania. Uh, this was part of Warner Brothers' crossover with WWE, using Hanna-Barbera properties. I think it's worth mentioning that the Jetsons did not set out to make any bold predictions of what the future might be. Uh, this was entertainment that reflected the values and pop culture of the time. Like the Flintstones, the Jetsons was a 50s or 60s sitcom transplanted into a fantastic environment, in this case the future. It was centered around a family, uh, the Jetsons, <laughs> obviously, and maintains mid-century gender norms. The father, George, <laughs> works, uh, but this feels more like a formality. He doesn't really do much, uh, just pushes a button nine hours a week, uh, I believe, which must be nice. His considerably younger wife, Jane, is a stay-at-home mom, but modern convenience has made it so that she really doesn't have to do much, <laughs> despite being outdated and the fact that many appliances uh, are self-cleaning. They also have a maid, Rosie. They have two children, teenager Judy and youngest Elroy. It's a funny concept to think about, but at the time of production, the traits and interests associated with being a teenager were still new. Judy embodied these, uh, including worshipping an Elvis-like heartthrob, Jet Screamer. Elroy is precocious, his understanding of science and tech is far beyond his years. The series itself takes place 100 years after production, so 2062. The Jetsons live in Orbit City, where structures sit atop massive columns in the sky. This has led to a lot of speculation <laughs> as to why, uh, what lies beneath, if you will. There are theories uh, for this, uh, pollution, flooding, uh, bedrock, even the Flintstones. Many of the less absurd technological advances have come true. Still no briefcase cars, but we do get the standards, so video calling, uh, push button news, or food service. It is heavily rooted in consumer culture. Jane is always shopping, needing the newest inventions. On account of this, I think it is fitting uh, that the Jetsons maintained their relevance between series uh, or films by appearing in commercials. Now we have covered a ton of retrofuturism on here, and it's sometimes very easy to get caught up in the concepts or aesthetics to forget that a lot of this is advertising. These are brands using optimism, <laughs> the idea of tomorrow, to sell your product. It's either cutting edge, or it will sustain, uh, will still be relevant or usable in a hundred or a thousand years. It's a common misconception as well, but retrofuturism is not inherently about predicting the future, uh, or even about the future at all. Uh, it's the past. It's history. Despite being geared towards adult audiences initially, after its first run, the Jetsons moved to Saturday mornings, and for multiple generations of kids became synonymous with the future. As these kids grew into adult consumers, the Jetsons became a valuable tool for advertisers, whether it was marketing, a product, or an ideal. As an example of the latter, this first piece we're going to be looking at is a 1990 PSA for the National Clean Air Coalition. This was an organization that lobbied for cleaner air and pollution reduction. It plays like a warning from George Jetson on what your future may look like if no action is taken. This coincided with the Jetsons' pop culture resurgence uh, that we were talking about earlier, their film in second season. Uh, through reruns and syndication, they remain known, but this kind of thrusted them back into mainstream relevance. Up next, we have this Australian Toyota commercial. The connection here is space. The Jetsons are from space. They also don't have enough space in their vehicle, so they stop for a new Toyota. 
Uh, I do like the design of the dealership. I think it's interesting any time a real-life brand uh, gets incorporated into a fictional universe. Uh, Rock Donald's? Anybody? Radio Shack would get this treatment in the late 90s. Uh, this was part of the Sprint store uh, within Radio Shack, beginning a partnership with the Jetsons in 1997. A series of commercials were produced featuring the family shopping there. Uh, we get mobile phones, pagers, and calling cards. Uh, these are all highlighted and celebrated as the future. Uh, this was not limited to television commercials. The Jetsons also appeared in print ads, including this one, that informs us that the 21st century is closer than we think. Apologies for the poor quality here, uh, but this is my personal favorite of the spots we're going to be covering today. Uh, though the Jetsons don't appear, their theme plays over this 2000 AOL commercial that showcases all the ways the internet had ushered in a future. It's very dated. Things like checking stocks online or attaching images in email are celebrated, um, but sometimes we do take for granted that we are uh, and were living in the future and that these developments were actually huge. Seemingly, this was the last time we collectively had an optimistic outlook on the future, uh, the millennium. I've talked about it before, but around 1997, the feeling was we made it. You know, the 21st century had long been hyped as the future in media, including in the Jetsons, and we were about to live it, uh, though a lot of this excitement would eventually be undercut uh, by Y2K and the fear that computers, this future, would fail. Two years later, the Jetsons appeared in this commercial for Electrosol, a dishwashing detergent. It again hypes up the 21st century. Uh, this was to be the futuristic way to wash dishes. By 2008, we had settled into our future. This Tums commercial found George suffering from heartburn after eating a chili dog pill. Uh, the last two ads here are both much more recent, or modern I guess. Uh, the first is from Arconic, which manufactures metal-based industrial products. Similar to the AOL spot, this imagines or parodies the Jetsons intro, albeit much more directly. We see the family in real life, as well as 2017 interpretations of the innovations featured within the show's opening. It's also updated to reflect the changes in gender roles uh, over half a century. Uh, Jane is now a collaborator or co-worker of George's, uh, rather than a stay-at-home mom. I think this is an interesting choice, and feels like we are seeing the evolution or future of the Jetsons, uh, which our final ad really dives into. This is for the LG Smart Think or ThinQ, uh, which as far as I can tell is just LG's Alexa. Uh, it's positioned as a House of Tomorrow type advert where a new product, the Future Eye, shows you what the future holds. Jane uses it to see the future of her family. Uh, now this pays some fan service. Uh, Judy ends up married to Jet Screamer. They have a child and we see how the laundering process of tomorrow functions. George hasn't changed much at all, but we do get a glimpse at the world outside. Smog, again. But thankfully, there are LG air purifiers that vacuum it up. Elroy, a teenaged, awkward and lanky, shows off the fridge and food prep of tomorrow, and Rosie gets replaced by the thin Q, uh, but apparently still sticks around. Uh, this really reminds me a lot of Holidays of Future Pass, which we covered in our Simpsons episode, so please check that out if you haven't. Uh, and yeah, that just about does it for Jetsons ads. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. If you enjoyed this video, check out the others in the series. Please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And if you have the means, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Uh, we have some exclusive episodes of Future Tunes and other retro futuristic videos over there, which you can get access to for just $5 a month. Patreon.com slash Pixel Portraits. As always, thank you so much for interest in this channel, and thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.